Dear students, now we are going to discuss two-ray propagation model in detail. This model is also called as ground reflection model because it has both direct path and ground reflected path between the transmitter and receiver. Okay, so here this model is based on the geometric optics. So this is the diagrammatic representation of two-ray propagation model. Here we can consider the transmitter with a height ht, the receiver with a height hr, the distance between the transmitter and receiver is d. So when the signal is propagating from the transmitter to the receiver, we can have two parts. One is the line of sight part, that is the direct path from the transmitter to the receiver. The next one is the ground reflected path. That's why it is called as two-ray propagation model or ground reflection model. So in this one, this ELOS represents the electric field of the line of sight. And here EI is the electric field of the incident wave. ER is equal to EG. That is the reflected wave field can be considered as a ground reflected wave. Theta i is the incident angle. Theta r is the reflected angle of the signal. You will understand this diagram. So here in general this two-ray propagation model is accurate to its maximum value only for large scale propagation. So large scale signal propagation means the distance between the transmitter and the receiver is in the order of several kilometers in terms of hundreds of kilometers and also we can consider only for the tall transmitter and a receiver the height should always be greater one Do you will understand this one so here the toure model is accurate to its maximum value only for the large scale signal strength over a large distance that is the order of several hundreds of kilometers and we can consider only for this tall towers okay so at this point we can get the total electric field is equal to what the line of sight field plus the ground reflected electric field you will understand this concept so next we are going to analyze the two-ray propagation model to get the received signal strength. So for that we can make a assumptions over here. The first assumption is the transmitter receiver separation distance is a few tens of kilometers. So for our analysis we can consider only tens of kilometers but in practical case it is in the order of hundreds of kilometers. Okay. The next one is earth is assumed to be flat. Then we can get the total received electric field is nothing but the sum of the line of sight electric field and the ground reflected electric field. Next we are going to consider the free space propagation electric field for the distance d greater than d naught. So here the distance between the transmitter and receiver is d. We can take that value should be greater than the reference distance d naught. This reference distance is very important in this two-ray analysis because this reference distance should always be greater than the front cover distance. Okay, so here we can take the free space propagation electric field for the value of d greater than d naught. So it is the function of the separation between the transmitter and receiver and the time. So E of D comma T is equal to E naught D naught by D cos of omega C of T minus D by C. So here this value represents the magnitude. This one represents the phase of the signal. Okay. So here D naught is the reference distance and it should be greater than the front cover distance. D is the distance between the transmitter and receiver. It should be greater than the reference distance and here E naught is the free space electric field at the reference distance D naught. 
and c is the velocity of light so as i told you here we can take only the magnitude to represent the envelope of the electric field so modulus of e of d comma t is equal to e not d not by d okay so here modulus represents the magnitude of the electric field that is nothing but the envelope of the electric field so next we are going to analyze the electric field due to the line of sight path that is also known as direct path so here the line of sight electric field travels a distance d dash then we can represent the electric field as a function of d dash comma t that is equal to e not d not by d dash cos of omega c into t minus d dash by c consider this as the second equation you will understand this one so the same way we can analyze the electric field due to reflection so here the reflected wave travels a distance d double dash then the electric field of the ground reflected wave as a function of d double dash comma t is equal to e not d not by d double dash cos of omega c t minus d double dash by c consider this as the third equation so now we have obtained the basic free space electric field line of sight electric field and then the ground reflected electric field in the next step we are going to find out the total electric field by applying these two expressions okay before going to get the total electric field we should understand the concept of a reflection coefficient so according to the law of reflection the incidence angle is equal to the reflected angle so here for a ground reflected wave the electric field can be represented as eg is equal to gamma into ei ei means incidence electric field okay so here gamma is the reflection coefficient so its value is minus 1 so here the total electric field is equal to the incident plus the reflected so here that is equal to ei plus gamma ei we can get the total electric field of the incident and reflected wave as 1 plus gamma into ei so this is the general consideration okay so next for small values of the incident angle here the magnitude of the reflected wave is almost equal to the incident wave but the phase is out of phase okay next we are going to find out the total electric field so for that we can substitute the second and third equation in this total electric field then we can get the total electric field as a function of the distance d and time t is equal to the line of sight electric field is e not d not by d dash cos of omega c t minus d dash by c for this ground reflected wave its value here it is minus 1 for ground reflection so e not d not by d double dash cos of omega c into t minus d double dash by c consider this as the fourth equation so here we can have two paths one is direct path with a distance d dash the next one is the reflected path with a distance d double dash so next we are going to find out the path difference between the direct path and ground reflected path for that we are going to use the method of images so this method is very important to analyze the path difference between the direct path and ground reflected path so this diagram is also very important one so in this one above this ground line we can take the actual two ray model with the transmitting antenna receiving antenna there is one direct path with a distance d dash and one reflected path with a distance d, d double dash so next we are going to use the method of images for that we can draw the same diagram just below this ground line okay so here we are going to find out the values of d dash and d double dash for that we can take the straight line from this receiving antenna to this transmitting antenna side 
so here we can take this is the overall antenna height ht so if we are going to take this so that can be represented as ht minus hr then we can consider this height as ht plus hr you will understand this one and then we are going to find out this d dash so for that we can take this triangle okay so this distance is what? This distance is D. Correct? So here we can take this triangle alone to find out D dash. So D dash is equal to what? Using Pythagoras theorem we can say square root of H T minus H R the whole square plus D square. Do you all understand this one? So D dash is equal to what? Square root of H T minus H R the whole square plus D square by using this diagram. So next we are going to find out D double dash. For that we can consider this triangle. So in this one if you are going to extend this line so this length is nothing but D double dash. Okay so whatever length is here you can see this length is equal to this one. So this and this both are same. Correct? So here we can consider this triangle to find out D double dash. So here this one is D double dash. This is D. This is HT plus HR. Now you can see D double dash is equal to what? Square root of HT plus HR the whole squared plus D squared. Do you all understand this one? So method of image is very important to find out the path difference. First we have to get this D dash and then D double dash. So for this D dash we can take this small triangle. For this D double dash we can take this big triangle. Okay. So by using this method of images we can find out the values of D dash and D double dash. So here for getting the value of this D dash we can take this triangle. So here this is D dash this is D. This one is HT minus HR. So we can get D dash is equal to square root of ht minus hr the whole square plus d square. For this d double dash we can take this triangle then we can obtain d double dash is equal to ht plus hr the whole square plus d square. Okay from this we can get the path difference between the line of sight and the ground reflected path as d double dash minus d dash we can represent the path difference as del. So del is equal to square root of ht plus hr the whole square plus d square minus square root of ht minus hr the whole square plus d square. If this d value the distance between the transmitter and receiver is far greater than the sum of these two transmitting and receiving antennas what will happen? The path difference can be obtained using Taylor series that is 2 into ht hr by d. Okay. So in this one we can get the value of the path difference as 2 into the transmitting antenna height into the receiving antenna height divided by the distance between the transmitting antenna and the receiving antenna. So this is an important formula to find out the path difference between the line of sight path and ground reflected path. Next one is the phase difference between the line of sight and the ground reflected field. So here it can be represented as theta del is equal to 2 pi del by lambda. Here we can replace this lambda as C by F. So we can write 2 pi del by C by F. Okay C by F if the F is going to the numerator then we can get 2 pi F as omega C. So we can get the phase difference is 2 pi del by lambda or del omega c by c. Okay. And then the time delay between the arrival of two components at the receiver side is in terms of path difference that is dou d is equal to del by c. It can also be represented as theta del that is the phase difference by 2 pi f c. So we can use these three formulas to find out the values of the path difference, phase difference and time delay between the arrival of the direct path and ground reflected path. 
if the distance between the transmitter and receiver is very large then the distance of the direct path is almost equal to the distance of the reflected path that is d dash is approximately equal to d double dash so in that case the amplitudes of the line of sight path and the reflected path both are virtually identical but differ only in phase so virtually identical means its magnitudes are almost equal so e not d not by d is equal to e not d not by d dash is equal to e not d not by d double dash so it is identical in case of large distance between transmitter and receiver so next we are going to analyze the received electric field at time t is equal to a reflected distance d double dash by c so here we are going to analyze the electric field at the receiver side at time t with respect to the reflected wave okay so for that we can take the fourth equation that equation we can replace the time with respect to this d double dash by c so here the fourth equation can be written like this e not d not by d dash cos of omega c d double dash here t is replaced with the term d double dash by c minus d dash by c so similarly in the second term we can take e not d not by d double dash cos of omega c d double dash by c minus d double dash by c so this term becomes zero so cos zero value is one then we can write this phase value as theta del so next we can take this e not d not by d dash with the angle theta del minus e not d not by d double dash here we can take this two values as d correct so here we can take this value as e not d not by d into theta del minus 1 and finally we can write the electric field at the receiver end at time t is equal to d double dash by c is equal to e not d not by d into the phase as theta del minus 1 finally we are going to analyze the phase of the total electric field using this phasor diagram so this one is for the direct path and this one is for the reflected path and here we can consider the total electric field with respect to the distance d so from this phasor diagram we can get the total electric field as 2 into e not d not by d sin of theta del by 2 so here the value of theta del depends on the path difference and this is the final representation of the total electric field as a function of the distance d